This mistake happened in the first fight as well, where Michael Chandler launched himself backwards, trying to get Charles off him, and it backfired in the rematch too. Now, in the first fight, you can see that Charles is set quite deep on Chandler's back so that he has to lean forwards and sink into the choke. But Michael Chandler had other ideas. He decided to power up through it and lift Charles's body weight on his back as he rose to his feet. And once he got there, he'd then launch himself backwards, trying to slam Charles off him and relieve the pressure of that grip. But this backfired, pun intended, and you can see that as he's standing, you can see that the body triangle's in from how Charles's foot is locked inside his leg. And ultimately, it tightened the grip because Michael Chandler essentially body slammed himself into a deeper body triangle. And especially given the fact that he's lying backwards now, he's deeper in that grip. You can see how much more wedged into Charles's legs he is. And from that position, the only way to avoid a rear naked chokehold was to use both of his hands on one of Charles's wrists to prevent him from locking him up. And in the process that freed up one of Charles's other hands and with Michael's head turned it gave him free shots and it ultimately was a mistake made again. And in that first fight this was arguably one of the biggest tactical errors that Michael Chandler made and he made the exact same mistake in the rematch at 3092. So he hadn't learned from the first fight and he made that mistake again and not just that in other areas too he was as gung-ho and reckless as before not technically streamlining his game and instead fight on fight he's been leaning more into that aggressive style of being a gung-ho fighter and abandoning his defense. So in terms of development and technical polishing, he's arguably regressed. Although in the rematch last night, we saw strikes to the back of Charles's head that were illegal, and they weren't isolated incidents either. He was trying to finish Charles from the back of his head with power blows. In full view of the referee, although this wasn't penalized, and it's worth noting that the scope of illegal tactics also stemmed into other fights. You can see against Dustin Poirier spitting out blood and also out of his nostrils alongside putting his fingers inside Dustin's gloves and hooking the fence line with his toes as well. And in the process, it also coincides with what we said earlier in the Charles fight, that gung-ho nature at all times and not so much educated or intelligent pressure. And while Chandler's had very close fights with Dustin Poirier, Justin Gagey and Charles as well, he's always fallen short against the super elite guys at 155 and that's because fight on fight he hasn't developed. Although that's partly down to wanting to score points with the UFC about providing entertainment on short notice and filling in to get the biggest fights possible by being an all action firework going into every fight. Now in that respect, you could say the same about Oliveira in the sense that he fights in a very gung-ho way as well and if you look at his actual title run he was in 50 50 affairs very much like michael chandler which on another night could have gone against him in the same way that chandler poirier chandler gagey on another night they may have gone mike's way charles was knocked down by dustin by justin by mike and it was only until the islam fight where he wasn't able to weather that storm. Now, that's one element, but at the same time, you can't always attribute it to luck because in terms of technical specifics, and especially since losing to Islam Makhachev, Charles has made adjustments in his game. Previously, he'd be very stationary on the center line, very there to be hit. Now, that's an inherent byproduct of being a Muay Thai fighter. You're square on, your shoulders are parallel. The surface area of your body is opened up in a way that it wouldn't be in a kickboxing or a regular boxing stance. He maximizes the surface area of his body that there is for people to hit. By taking his head off the center line now when throwing shots, he's also able to extend on that right cross of his. And that's a shot that sat down Justin Gagey against Benil Darius. It proved very handy. Against Arman less so, with now Sayukian ascending through the division to challenge Islam next. But with Michael Chandler, there hasn't quite been those small adjustments along the way where from one fight to the next, polishing up his technique in X, Y, and Z hasn't been there. And you could pinpoint things about Charles in the respect of moving his head off the line. You could also pinpoint an increased emphasis on wrist control in the clinch, where after Islam, if he's not getting his way when being pressed up against the fence line, 
he now looks to control the wrist with two of his hands a lot more. And even if it opens him up to taking a blow or two with the other hand of the other fighter, it just prevents them from getting even firmer a control of him so he can reverse out or pivot sideways. And small adjustments like that carry massive consequences. And they've paid dividends for Charles, except for the Armand fight. Against Benil Darius and against Michael Chandler last night, we saw those polished up fundamentals and how they've paid dividends for Charles in his MMA game. Striking specifically. Now, Michael Chandler, had he fight by fight made those adjustments to become more technically polished, we could be having a very different conversation. However, Chandler was looking to enter the UFC from a... Well, he was looking to establish his legacy further, of course. But bear in mind, this is a man who peaked... Bellator 2013, 2014, around then. He's around about nine years past his actual prime. And so while he's matured in terms of his overall game, in terms of being at his most potent, that was him 10 years ago. So his goal, and this was reflected with the moment he stepped in, a co-main event on a Conor McGregor undercard against Poirier, ironically. He faced Dan Hooker and the best possible first impression was made. He went in there and delivered the best possible first impression, knocking out Hooker the way he did, the backflip celebration as well. He then went into fill on late notice in fights against Dustin Poirier, Justin Gagey, arguably back-to-back -back fighter of fight of the year contenders, with Justin against Michael, perhaps probably the fight of the year as well in 2022. So when you factor in the package that he's brought to the UFC, scoring points with the organization such to the extent that he landed himself the fight against Conor McGregor, although that's partly out of his control as it takes two parties to coordinate and go ahead with a fight. So... In light of that, he's actually approached this, not less so from a legacy angle, but his priority was securing the Conor payday and maximising the money in UFC that he wouldn't have got 10 years ago in other organisations. So that influenced his style as well. There was less incentive to technically improve and polish up his technique. Charles had that incentive because... He'd built his brand already. Charles is now one of the UFC's, I'd say, top six, seven biggest stars out of the active fighters. Handily out of the active fighters, I'd say. And that was reflected in the crowd reception too. Not because people hate Chandler, just because Oliveira is so wildly loved by the MMA fan base. And so in light of that, I think that does contextualise why perhaps they've gone in different directions, but I felt it was equally worth dissecting those technicalities to broaden the wider conversation about why things got to where they are now. And since 2021, between the first fight and the rematch, why Charles's career went one way and Chandler never quite broke through the glass ceiling that was there back then thank you guys for watching if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you in future videos or the extended breakdowns just tweet them over to me that's at elusive raf on twitter if you guys want to see my daily fight analysis uploads i upload those every day to instagram and that's at elusive 2.0 on instagram